What up, lovely people? This is Medicosis Perfect Snatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. We continue our biology playlist and let's talk about the autonomic nervous system. Why do you call it autonomic? Because it's automatic, it's involuntary, you cannot control it. Can you make your stomach secrete more acid? Oh, I can do that. Oh, shut up. Now let's get started. This is my biology playlist. Please watch these videos in order. The autonomic nervous system is part of the nervous system. Where does the nervous system come from? Is it endoderm, mesoderm or ectoderm? It's ectoderm. Is it surface ectoderm or neuroectoderm? It's neuroectoderm. You can divide the nervous system into central and peripheral. The central is the brain and spinal cord. Peripheral is what's coming out of the brain called cranial nerves or what is coming out of the spinal cord called spinal nerves. As you know, some of these nerves are motor, some are sensory, some are both, some have autonomic. In your brain, what are the cranial nerves that have autonomic function? Remember 1973. Let's go. Cranial nerve 3, 7, 9, and not 1, but 10. The oculomotor, the facial, the glossopharyngeal, and the vagus. How about the spinal nerves? Which ones have autonomic functions? Well, remember the sympathetic was thoracolumbar. So the thoracic area will have autonomic fibers, lumbar area will have autonomic fibers. How about the parasympathetic craniosacral? So the sacral area will have autonomic functions. Nervous system could be somatic or autonomic. What's the difference? Somatic is voluntary. You can control. Autonomic, involuntary. You cannot control. Remember the book, uh, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People? What did Dr. Stephen Covey tell you? Take control of that which you can control. What people did not understand is that he was talking about the somatic nervous system. Ha <laughs> ha. Somatic could be motor or sensory. Autonomic could be motor or sensory. Gray matter versus white matter was discussed before. In the spinal cord, gray matter is in the middle, white matter is around it. In the brain, it's the other way around. Myelin appears white. This is your neuron. It's made of a soma and an axon. Collection of these doofuses, somas in the CNS, is called a nucleus. A collection of these somas in the peripheral nervous system is a ganglion. A collection of axons in the CNS is a tract, in the PNS it's a nerve. What's the structural unit of the nervous system? The neuron. What's the functional unit? The reflex arc. And of course, the reflex arc, remember, sarasir. What's the S? Stimulus. What's the R? Receptor. What's the A? Afferent. What's the C? Center. What's the E? Efferent. What's the other E? Effector organ. And what's the R? Response. This is like touching a hot candle. This is your spinal cord. Lovely. Draw the line in the sand. This line was the sulcus limitans when you were an embryo. Anything behind sensory, anything in front is motor, with some exception. The afferent is behind the line. It is sensory. The afferent is in front of the line. It is motor. Both will meet and form the spinal cord. Therefore, the spinal cord has sensory fibers and nerve fibers in the same nerve. And then it will divide into dorsal ramus and ventral ramus. Dorsal ramus, well, no one cares. Just some sensory and motor fibers to the skin of your back, muscles of your back. That's about it. All of the action, all of the fun is in the ventral ramus. This is the viscera, the heart, the lungs, the gut, the autonomic nervous system your abdominal muscles, the spleen, the liver, all of this lovely stuff. Let's review the reflex, sarasir, which in Arabic means cockroaches. Stimulus, receptor, afferent, sender, efferent, effector, response. Stimulus, I touch the hot stove. What's the receptor? A receptor for temperature. What's the afferent? It's a dorsal root. Where is the center? Spinal cord. After the center, there is efferent motor, baby. To do what? To go to your muscles, such as your biceps, to contract the biceps and tell the biceps, get away. Get your hand away from the candle, it's hot. So we go center, efferent, effector organ, which is the biceps, and the response is flexion of the arm. Reflexes. Some of them are monosynaptic, just one synapse, one connection, or polysynaptic, many connections. Look at this. Here is one neuron, the yellow one. Here is another neuron, the red one. How many connections are between them? Just one connection. Here is one and one. They meet in one point. Okay, look at this one. Polysynaptic. Here is a neuron. Here is a second neuron and a third neuron. How many connections here? 
This is one, this is two. So this is more than one. Polysynaptic. Most of the reflexes in your body are polysynaptic. An example of a monosynaptic reflex is the stretch reflex. Somatic is voluntary, autonomic is involuntary. This is voluntary, playing the piano, playing football, basketball, baseball, all kinds of exercises. All of this is somatic. For these fine movements, I'll give you the best fibers that I have. A alpha fibers. They are myelinated, they are thick, they are very, very good. And not only this, I'll give you many fibers because these are very fine movements. Take many fibers. Take as many fibers as you want. It's a very fine movement. But the autonomic is not that fine. The autonomic is the part of the nervous system that regulates bodily functions that are not under your conscious control, aka involuntary. The autonomic is sympathetic or parasympathetic. If you're just getting started, this is enough. But if you're a pro, add the enteric nervous system in your gut. The myenteric to move your gut, submucosal for secretion. The M, myenteric, motility. The submucosa is for secretions. Let's compare between the somatic and the autonomic nervous system. Somatic, everything here is one. Autonomic, everything is two. Somatic, all right. What, how many types do you have? Um, just somatic, that's it. Autonomic, well, I could be sympathetic or parasympathetic. If you are running from a tiger, sympathetic. If you are resting, digesting, reading a book, this is parasympathetic. Dear somatic, what's the target? Uh, only one target, skeletal muscles. How about uh, autonomic? Well, I have two targets, muscles and glands. And each one has two subtypes. I supply cardiac muscles and smooth muscles. I supply exocrine gland and endocrine glands. Somatic, what's your function? Contract those muscles. How about autonomic? Well, I can increase contraction or decrease contraction. I increase secretion, decrease secretion. I can increase or decrease. Somatic, how many fibers do you have? Just one type of fiber. A, usually A alpha. How about autonomic? And now I have two types, B or C. Somatic, just one efferent. I do not need any gangly because I gotta be super fast. This is a person who is about to be eaten by the willy mammoth. Oh, do you think we have time to waste in a freaking ganglion? No, we do not need a ganglion. So, if skip it, just one efferent. How about autonomic? Oh, I can wait. I'm just going to tell the stomach to secrete more acid. Ah, I can wait. So, two efferents, preganglionic, and then a ganglion, and then postganglionic. Preganglion, post. Preganglionic fibers are usually type B fibers. The postganglionic are usually type C. Somatic, how many neurotransmitters do you need? I need just acetylcholine. I'm just uh, self-sufficient. Just that's it. Uh, autonomic. Uh, well, I have two neurotransmitters: acetylcholine and norepinephrine. If this postganglionic fiber is sympathetic, I'll use norepinephrine. Fight flight. But if this fiber is parasympathetic, I'll use acetylcholine. Somatic is voluntary, autonomic is involuntary. Somatic is an operator, just contract the muscle. Autonomic is a coordinator. I can increase, I can decrease, I can do anything. Somatic starts at the anterior horn cell because it's closer to the exit. Autonomic starts at the lateral horn cell. Ah, oh, we don't care, we, we are not in a hurry. But the anterior horn cell has to be next to the exit of the spinal cord because we are about to get eaten by the woolly mammoth. Somatic is faster, we do not need a ganglion. Autonomic is slower, we can waste some time. Somatic is A alpha, autonomic is B and C. And if you remember, A is myelinated, B myelinated, C non-myelinated. Look at this lovely example, here is your spinal nerve, preganglionic, and then your lay in a ganglion, and then you have postganglionic. Preganglionic, B. Postganglionic, C type fibers. Preganglionic, where did you start? Well, follow me. I started here at the central nervous system. But hey, preganglionic, where did you start? Well, if you follow the fiber, this is the axon. Where's the soma? It's hidden here inside the ganglion. So I started in the peripheral nervous system. Hey, preganglionic fiber, what do you secrete? I secrete one thing only acetylcholine. How about postganglionic? Well, it depends. If you're sympathetic, I'll secrete norepinephrine. If you're parasympathetic, I'll secrete acetylcholine. What's a ganglion? Well, a ganglion is a collection of somas in the peripheral nervous system. Why do I need it? It's a distribution center, like Amazon centers. It's a relay station for regulation. Engineers can relate. Pause and review. 
All right, we have spinal ganglion here. Of course, it's behind the line, so it is sensory, not motor. And we have autonomic ganglia. Sympathetic nervous system has some ganglia. The parasympathetic autonomic nervous system has other ganglia. If you want to dig deeper into this stuff, check out my physiology playlist where we get into more detail. Does the ganglion really exist? Well, it depends on what you mean by exist. If you mean like a circle like this, no, it's not a circle like this. A ganglion is basically many somas budding their heads against each other. This is the circle that was drawn in the previous slide. Sympathetic nervous system. If you remember that you're running from a tiger, you will get every question about the sympathetic correctly. How about parasympathetic autonomic nervous system? You are resting, digesting, reading, eating, and taking a bleep. Fight, flight versus rest, digest. Who supplies the adrenal medulla? I need the adrenal medulla because it secretes epinephrine and norepinephrine, or you can say adrenaline and noradrenaline. And I need them because they increase my heart rate and they make me super active while running from a tiger. So only the sympathetic nervous system supplies the adrenal medulla. How about secreting some acid and digestive enzymes from your gut? Well, this is resting and digesting, so it's parasympathetic. How about secreting some saliva so you can chew your food properly? This is parasympathetic because it's rest and digest. How about constricting your pupils like this so the light does not reflect a lot and disrupt you so that you can focus and read a book? Oh, this is parasympathetic, rest and digest. While running from a tiger, you cannot read a book. If I give you a book while running from a tiger, you will not be able to read it because your eyesight is focused on the far distance, not the near distance. All right, sympathetic, parasympathetic, catabolic versus anabolic. Who do you think is catabolic? Catabolic basically means you're burning the stuff to get energy, okay? You're breaking down the big stuff like glycogen into small stuff like glucose. Of course, sympathetic will do this because I'm running from a tiger. I need all the glucose that I can get. But what if you're resting and digesting? Oh, I can save some stuff for a rainy day. This is anabolic. Sympathetic, catabolic. Parasympathetic, anabolic. The sympathetic response. You're running from a tiger. Let's go. What should happen to your bronchi? They should dilate to let more air in because I want to breathe more because I'm running from a tiger. I need all the oxygen in the world. What should happen to your heart? I should increase the heart rate and the stroke volume. How fast? how strong the heart is pumping because I'm running from a tiger. I need every single drop of oxygen that I can deliver to those doozy tissues. What should we do to your eyes? I should dilate the pupil to see more and I should make my lens flat to see far ahead of me. Not the book. I don't care about the book We're running from a tiger. I need to see far ahead. What should you do to the spleen, sympathetic? I will squeeze it because the spleen is a storage unit containing all kinds of blood cells. So squeeze it, get the blood out, including red blood cells, to carry and deliver more oxygen to those doozy tissues. What should you do to the skeletal muscles? I should dilate the vessels going to those skeletal muscles to bring more blood and more oxygen to those muscles so that I can run from a tiger. What should we do to your gut? Is it time for you to poop right now? Poop right now? I'm running from a tiger, I'm gonna die. Shut it down. How do you shut the gut down? Well, relax the wall so it does not contract and constrict the sphincter. So if you have a sphincter here, close it. It's not time to poop right now, stop it. Is it time to urinate while running from a tiger? Oh, heck no. So what should I do? Same thing. Relax the wall of the bladder, but constrict the sphincter. What should happen to the blood vessels? Do you want us to give blood to all of these useless organs that we don't need right now? No, no, no. I will constrict all of the blood vessels here because I want to deliver less blood. I only want the blood to go to three organs. Skeletal muscles, heart, and brain. Other than that, constrict, shut it down. What should you do to your adrenal medulla? It should secrete epinephrine or epinephrine to raise my heart rate and blood pressure. This is the sympathetic land. Now let's go to parasympathetic land. Resting, digesting, eating, reading, and taking a dump. Let's go. When it comes to the eye, I want the lens to be circular and spherical like this. Why? To focus on the near distance. How about the pupil? Meiosis or constriction. Why? Because if it's midrisis, it will let in lots of light. Light is going to reflect into the book, come into my eye. If you have too much light coming into your eye, you will not be able to focus. It will be blurry and so bright. So, constrict it. All right. 
Do you need your bronchi to dilate right now? No, just uh, I don't need it to be dilated. So constricted, secrete, all kinds of stuff. How about saliva? Oh, I want lots of saliva because I'm eating right now. How about the gut? I want the gut to move. Contract the wall, relax the sphincter. Do you want to pee? Of course. So contract the wall of the bladder, relax the urethral sphincters. Some dirty thoughts can come to your head while in the bath, so you get erection. Remember, parasympathetic points. What does the parasympathetic do to blood vessels? Easy. I should dilate my blood vessels. Why do you want to dilate them? Because parasympathetic is secretomotor. Okay, how do I get my secretions? Basically, all of these secretions come from the plasma of the blood. Even your tears came from the plasma in the blood vessel. So I want to dilate the vessel, supply these organs with more blood so that they can make it into secretions. And when you supply the erectile tissue with blood, they get erect. When you supply your salivary glands with blood, they make more saliva. When you supply your trachea with more blood, she gives you more mucus. This is where I get my secretions. See, medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. When the lens is flat, this is far vision. When the lens is spherical like this, this is near vision. Sympathetic land, parasympathetic land. The lens is flat for far vision. When the lens is accommodated like this, this is near vision. Sympathetic land, parasympathetic land, pause and review. Who's trying to constrict my pupil? Parasympathetic, especially cranial nerve three. Who's trying to dilate my pupils? Sympathetic, especially thoracic number one. Because remember, sympathetic is thoracolumbar. Parasympathetic is craniosacral. Parasympathetic points. Sympathetic shoots. Erection, ejaculation. What's the effect on the urinary bladder? Well, if you are sympathetic nervous system, you should relax the wall, constrict the sphincter. But if you are parasympathetic nervous system, you should contract the wall, relax the sphincter. No urination, lots of urination. And here is a beautimous table comparing between sympathetic and parasympathetic. Hey, sympathetic, what would you do to the head and neck? Elevation of the upper eyelid, dilation of the pupil, and exothalamus to see more, to see better because I'm running from a tiger. Parasympathetic, what do you do? Meiosis, which is constriction of the pupil, and accommodation, which means making the lens spherical. Sympathetic increases sweat because you're running from a tiger. You need to sweat a lot, evaporate and cool down your body. Otherwise, you will burn under the blazing sun while running from a tiger. That's not a way to die. On the heart, sympathetic will increase all your cardiac properties, heart rate, stroke, volume, etc. Parasympathetic will decrease them. Sympathetic, constrict everything except blood vessels to the heart and skeletal muscles. Parasympathetic, dilate. Why? To get my secretions. Sympathetic, bronchodilate, decrease bronchial secretion. I need lots of oxygen to come in. I don't have time for secretion. Parasympathetic, the opposite. Constrict, increase secretions. Where did you get the secretions from? From the vasodilation. On the gut, sympathetic, relaxes the wall, contract the sphincter. On the bladder, same thing. Parasympathetic, on the bladder and the gut, contract the wall, relax the sphincter. Genital organs, parasympathetic, points. Sympathetic, shoots. Sympathetic is catabolic, parasympathetic is anabolic. Now, this slide was explained in detail in my physiology playlist. Let's review it quickly. All of these fibers before any ganglia are called preganglionic, and all of them release acetylcholine. Awesome. How about the postganglionic? If you are parasympathetic, you will release acetylcholine. If you're sympathetic, you will release norepinephrine. How about if I am neither sympathetic or parasympathetic? I'm just somatic. I'm going to skeletal muscles. Voluntary contraction, baby. You always have acetylcholine. Remember, somatic, everything is one. You just need one neurotransmitter, the acetylcholine. For more detail, always check my physiology playlist. If you like this video, I have a renal physiology course on my website, medicosisperfectionetis.com. Most of these notes that I illustrate for these videos are available on my website as well. If you like, I also have an acid-base imbalance course. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. As always, be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.